you have to give me any compliments. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. It's good to see all who are here with us this morning. Uh, not good. We went here last week, and and from my heart, just as much as everybody else. Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 you. Well, you should have started preaching then. <laughs> Your wife was with you? No, she wasn't. Oh, she wasn't? Okay. Okay. By yourself. Hey, how's it It's good to see you all who are with us, and we're glad that we're able to be here. And really, no, no problems as far as with, with anything here, so that's, that's a good thing. Before I have come to the and I will call to worship and opening prayer. I do have birthdays for the month of September. I don't want to forget that. Um, <coughs> so I just get this a few that I want to mention that are in September. Um, tomorrow is Virginia Hall's birthday. Whopping 39 years old. <laughs> but this Virginia Hall's birthday is tomorrow. Um, September the 15th, um, Shane's sister, Kayla, her birthday is September the 15th. And then at the end of September, the 29th of September is Mandy's birthday. Any other birthdays that we may have missed or forgotten or anybody else here that has a birthday for the month of September. But we do like to wish both who are here a happy birthday coming up. And now I'm going to say happy birthday to all.
things the father might be the father knowing knowing what you've done for each and every one of us i thank you again for each one who's here and father i pray for each and every one in fellowship have with one another father by brothers Take charge of the service, Father. Lead us, God, us, direct us. In our Son's precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. May be seated. Again, we do welcome everyone. It's good to see all of you with us this morning. It's good to be in God's house to come and worship Him, to praise Him, and to glorify Him as our God and our Savior and our Lord. In a way of announcements and of Underneath the morning worship uh, or worship, you'll notice just a few announcements uh, you need to be aware of that are taking place for the month of September and into October as well. Uh, not uh, on the 20th of September, we will have our men's fellowship at NOLA Southern Grill on Gold Boulevard. Uh, that used to be the Retro Grill and also used to be O'Henry's, and it's right down the street from um, Copeland's. So it's on God's Boulevard for all the men uh, that would like to join together. Not this coming Thursday, but it should be the following Thursday. So basically in two weeks, the 20th of September, we have the Men's Fellowship at the Southern Grill. Uh, the first Saturday in October, October 6th, we will have our Fall Harvest Picnic or Festival, however you want to do it, from 3 o'clock until. So for all who would like to come, Enjoy the fellowship and enjoy the time together. We'll have it back over here by the gazebo, by the tree. Uh, so we'll have uh, different things. Uh, we'll, we'll have a, something for the, for the kids and for everybody. But it's just a time of getting together uh, for the fall. And usually we have it at the end of October, but now we're having it at the beginning of it. So that way it's not too uh, soon before our Thanksgiving bank. It gives a little bit more time between the two. So, 6th of October, the first Saturday in October, we will have our fall festival at 3 o'clock. Um, for all who would like to come, or you won't come sooner, that's fine, because I'll be here between 11 and 12 o'clock as we do have set up things, and for other people as well, you can talk to me about that uh, later uh, as well. Uh, we are collecting for Georgia Barnett uh, offering for state missions. Uh, they're offering envelopes there for that. I'd ask you if you would like to give, to do so over and above the working of the church, which you give is your normal God, or you normally give the working church. And I, and I know it's hard because, you know, with the cost of everything going up, gas, groceries, and everything else, if you can do it, do it. That's between you and the Lord. Whatever you want to give as far as to, we're collecting for Georgia or that, you do, whether it's a dollar, 50 cents, two dollars, whatever it is, that's between you and the Lord, but do that over and above the working of the church. And, and again, they're all free on both there. Now, Georgia Burnett is money that's collected for work that's being done in Louisiana. Make sure work being done here in Louisiana, not the, not, not, not the states as far as, even though it's called Georgia Burnett, it was after a person by the name of Georgia Burnett. Uh, this doesn't go to Georgia. It doesn't go to Kentucky or Tennessee, other places. This money here is designated to where when we send it to the uh, SPC, they basically give more that money to be worked for mission work being done in Louisiana, about the state of Louisiana. So if you want to give, that's fine. That's between you and the Lord uh, as far as giving it. We're collecting that for the month of September. Uh, whatever we collect, we'll send it to the general office and they will give the money and to hear more poor work being done in Louisiana. So just so you know that even though it's in Georgia, for now, this doesn't go to Georgia. There's this whole work being done here in Louisiana. Whatever you want to give, you give. That's between you and the Lord. Again, they're offering on those sales. Any other announcements or anything else we need to be aware of that's going on or taking place for the month of September? Anything else? If not, staff will lead us another hit, please. Turn to step number 434. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus. <laughs>
concerns of different people in different places and different ones that we are praying for. And even many who are not mentioned on here, we continue to pray for. And I ask you to remember these in prayer. Do pray for all the people that have been devastated by Hurricane Isaac, the many that are still dealing with the after effects, cleaning their homes, or even trying to get back to their homes in certain places in certain areas. Remember all these people and what they're dealing with. And even though many of us, we did okay doing this, there are many who have not. And we want to lift them up in prayer and pray for them and for their well-being and for their watch care, for God's care upon them. So remember the many people that are still dealing with the after effects and what's going on in their lives as well. So do uh, remember them in prayer. Other prayer requests that you would like to share with us this morning, Thanksgiving, concern, or whatever more would like to lay, would you like to share with us the more lays upon your heart? Anyone? <coughs> Renee. I just want to continue to remember my mother when she was in the hospital and she had Because he 
remember what Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes into the Father except through me. He is the reason that we breathe, the reason that we can continue on. Without Him, there is no hope for us. So in everything, no matter what you may be going through, always give thanks to the Lord. The Lord is coming. Let's go, Lord. Almighty God, as we come to you this morning, we thank you, Lord. We do thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for this place. We thank you that we are able to come here together to worship, praise, and glorify you. And Lord, we do. We glorify you. We praise you this morning. Give unto us hearts that we may be receptive to your word. Open our ears, our eyes to your word. And help us, Lord, that from your word that we may grow and that we can continue on. We do lift up all the prayers, all the concerns that have been mentioned, and even all of the unspoken concerns. <coughs> we lift up each and every one, and we pray for your will to be done in all things and in everything. The many that are dealing with different physical problems and ailments, we ask for healing, for grace, for mercy, for strength, and for guidance in the lives of each and every one. For the many that are going through difficult times, whatever may be going on, things at work, things at home, or even things within ourselves. We ask for your grace, for your mercy, for your help in these different situations and these difficulties that have come into our lives. Help us with it, that we may be able to continue by your grace and for your glory. Again, we lift up the different people that have been mentioned to the different requests. We leave them into your hands and just ask for your help, for your grace, and for your mercy. And Lord, we especially pray for the many who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, whomever they may be, friends, family members, co-workers, whoever. We pray for salvation for so many who do not know Jesus. We pray for the many senior adults and what goes on in their lives, those in nursing homes, those in their private homes, wherever they may be. We lift them all up before you. Traveling mercy for all who are traveling and will be traveling. And we pray you watch over us and be with us. Not only for today, but throughout the course of the week as well. And again, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you. Be with us. Give unto us your power and help us. And we pray for your guidance, for your leadership, and for your help in all of our lives. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Let's continue then, and now comes the allegiance and our offertory hymn. <coughs> Turning hymn number 149, standing, did we sing, Blessed Redeemer. <laughs>
Lord, again, we come before you. We thank you for your many blessings. Lord, as we come at this time, and we give you back a portion of what you have blessed us with. We ask, Lord, that you'll see to that all that is collected is used for the furtherance of your kingdom, for the spreading of the gospel. And Lord, may you bless both the gift and the giver. In the name of Jesus. Amen.
And it's always been one of my, I guess, my favorite songs, only because it gives comfort and help to know that Jesus is always there. He helps us, he walks with us, he talks with us, and he comforts us. He knows what goes on in our lives, each and every day of our lives. There is nothing that God, that Christ does not know that happens in our lives. And he does care. And all we have to do is remember that he is there with us whatever comes in our lives. If you had your Bible this morning, turn, if you will, to Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7, looking at verses 36 through 50. A woman who came to Jesus, and also a Pharisee who was invited by Jesus. In Luke chapter 7, verse 36 and following here, we have Jesus and the story of what actually took place is Jesus is at the house of a Pharisee by the name of Simon. Now, Jesus not only accepted hospitality from tax collectors and sinners, but he also from the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the teachers of the law. He would go into their house. Jesus would share the word of God to anyone. And let's face it, all people need the word of God. Even the Pharisees, the Sadducees, even you and I on a daily basis, we need the Word of God to nourish us, to help us in our daily struggles in life. Now, Simon was a rich man, and he considered himself better than most people. Matter of fact, we will see in here, Simon is a, very, is a person who is a self-righteous Pharisee. And we will see different things concerning him, and also the woman that is in his house and what will take place. Now, it's also strange here that Jesus should be invited to the house of a Pharisee. And I say that because the Pharisees and Jesus, there was no love between them. Now, Jesus loved them, but they did not truly love Jesus. They did not even honor him. They did not look to him as one who came from God. So it is strange that here we see, and we often ask, well, why is Jesus invited into the house of a Pharisee? Well, it's possible that this, this Pharisee may have invited Jesus to spy upon him. Maybe to get some false evidence or something that he can bring back to what they call back then the Sanhedrin, that he was a part of, and to tell them, hey, this is what Jesus is doing. This is what he's done in my house. This is what he's preaching. This is what he's teaching. Just to find fault. And we're going to see that this Pharisee truly did not believe in Jesus as a prophet or even as one who came from God. So it's interesting here that we have this episode that is actually taking place on this particular time and what even happens in the house of this Pharisee. So it's going to be interesting. So today, by God's grace, let us look at what took place in the house of Simon the Pharisee and apply it to our lives and to see, most of all, the grace of God administered before the eyes of Simon. What Simon did not see that day. First of all, if you notice in verse 36 through 39, first we have the sinful woman. That Jesus is in the house of the Pharisee. Notice, now one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him. So he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. When a woman who had lived a sinful life in that town, learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. She brought an alabaster jar of perfume. And as she stood behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would have known who was touching him and what kind of woman she, she is, that is, she is a sinner. So we have first the sinful woman coming into the house of this Pharisee. If you notice, she humbles herself before Jesus in utter humility. There, she comes before him. She, at some point in her life, we don't know when or how, at some point in life, she probably heard the words of Jesus Christ. 
She probably listened to the words that he spoke to maybe some of her friends. Maybe she knew Matthew. Maybe she knew the tax collectors. Maybe she knew some of the people that Jesus knew as well. And she may have heard him, we do not know. But here we see that she comes. And in evidence of her actions, is repenting of sin or asking for forgiveness. And she's putting her trust and her hope in Jesus Christ as Lord, as Messiah, and for the forgiveness of sins. Now, when the opportunity presents itself, she comes into the house of the Pharisee. Now understand, usually when they had a thing like that, it was open for anybody could come. But it was very unusual for women of that day to come into a house. Because again, it was not right back then in public for women to associate with men or even to talk to men. So this took a big step for this woman to do such a thing as this. But she comes in there anyway and it presented herself. And so she comes out of a grateful heart and by her actions, we see that she's not only seeking Jesus for forgiveness, but also we're seeing that she's thanking Jesus for the hope that she now has or she's finding in him. This woman, in all probability, is a prostitute. She said it was all we have here is that she was a woman who led a sinful life. So that's the indication here that maybe she was a prostitute. She was a woman who did things that she should not have been doing. She was an outcast by the other religious people, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, and other people as well. And she saw Jesus as one to whom she could find hope, a peace, a forgiveness, to one to where in her life things were missing. And here he was, the Son of God coming, and she could find that light at the end of the tunnel. She is overwhelmed by her sin. And now she comes and she humbly kneels before Jesus in anticipation of seeking forgiveness and help and hope that's needed in her life. And if you notice, by her action, she never says a word, but by her action, she is asking Jesus basically to forgive her of the sins in her life and what she has done. And in her own life, she is making Jesus Lord of her life. She is looking to him. She kneels behind him. She is, here, here we see by her actions, she is not only asking, but she's also thanking in both ways concerning what, she, what she's doing. By her actions, we see a lot that is going on. And this is going to play an important role that we're going to see later on as Jesus declares unto her. But notice the sinful woman comes and he, and he by her action declares unto Jesus. And what she gives unto Jesus. And the same thing in our lives as well. No matter what sin or sins that we have done, we can always come to Jesus Christ. We can always look to Him for help, for hope. There are many things that come into our lives and we, we struggle with sin on a daily basis. And to overcome sin, it begins with Jesus Christ. And she knew that the sin in her life was not what the Lord had wanted in her life. And so she comes to the one to whom she knows can help her to overcome. And the same thing even today. There are sins that we deal with on a daily basis. And the only one that can help us to overcome sin is Jesus Christ. And so we need to take a lesson from this woman concerning how she comes into the Lord. It's told to us in Psalm chapter 34 and verse 17 and 18, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Now who is more crushed in spirit and brokenhearted than someone who's living a very sinful life? She knows that there are things in her life that should not be. She is burdened, she is downcast. And so she comes in the Lord for help, for grace, and for mercy. And she gives it. And she humbles herself before the Lord, not expecting, but hoping. And then also, what it tells us in Luke chapter 5, in verse 31 32, here the Lord as well, in Luke chapter 5, reveals 
to us. At one time when he called Levi or Matthew to be one of his disciples, Matthew gave a banquet. And there at the banquet, it says, were many tax collectors and sinners that were there. Maybe she was there at that time. And Jesus so spoke as, as many of the Pharisees and teachers complained uh, of Jesus associating with these people. And Jesus answered these people and said to them, in Luke chapter 5, 31, 32, it is not the healthy who need a doctor for the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Is it possible that this woman was one of those who heard Jesus say, I have come to call those who are full of sin? Then, then again, as Gospel of Luke, as Luke compares here, he says, the sinful woman comes unto Jesus. And here she is seeking help for her sinful life. See, help in our lives comes from the Lord. We need to take a lesson from this woman. Humble ourselves before Him. Acknowledge Him. And lean upon His mercy and His grace. And say, Lord, help me. Help me with the sin in my life. As Jesus said, and as He said, and he said in the parable, He said, before you can help your brother, Speck in his eye, first you must take the coal out of your own eye. You must take that log out of your own eye. You must do, deal with your own sin before you can try to help someone else's. See, many times we want to help someone else in their sin, but we neglect to help ourselves in the sin that we're dealing with. And the only way that we can do that is by giving it to the Lord, allowing Him to work in our hearts and our lives, just like this sinful woman. Allowing Jesus Christ in our hearts and our lives. This is the act of a sinful woman. She comes there. In where all these people are. And she's seeking the Lord. It didn't matter to her. She overcomes these obstacles. See, many times we allow obstacles to hinder us from seeking the Lord and helping us with the sin or a particular sin or sins in our own lives. She overcame all of that. She humbled herself before the Lord. It didn't matter to her what anybody else thought. She just went. She knelt before the Lord. She came to the Lord. And as you, I've often said over and over, and I'll keep on saying it, you need to come to the Lord and give it to Him. Give it to the Lord on a daily basis. And allow Him to help you with the sin in your life. How else are you going to overcome sin? I can't, we can't do it on our own. None of us. We need help. We need divine help. And that help comes by knowing Jesus Christ right here. And this woman did this. She came to Jesus. She said, Lord, I need help. Many times we come to the Lord and we don't say, I need help. We say, Lord, give me. Give me. But rather than ask the Lord, give, say, Lord, I need help. I need help. There are things in my life that I need to get rid of. There are things in my life that just shouldn't be there. We need to be like the sinful woman. We need to humble ourselves before the Lord. Then we have the self-righteous Pharisee. That's the second thing. This is one thing that we do not need to be in our lives. And there are far too many in the churches and outside the world who are just like the self-righteous Pharisee. Look at what he does. Look at what happens in, in verses 39 and 47. Again, the self-righteous Pharisee. Look at what took place. As this woman here comes to Jesus for help, for grace, and for mercy, what is what do you think this Pharisee, this religious person, what do you think he thinks? When the Pharisee who had, who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, wait a minute, I thought this man was a prophet. He's no prophet. If he were a prophet, he'd know who this woman was. She is a sinner. And then Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Oh, tell me, teacher. Oh, I want to hear this. Two men. They owed a certain amount, certain money left. One owed 500 denarii, and the other 50. Now, neither one of them had the money to pay him back. So, out of grace, he canceled the debts of old. Now, which one do you think loved him more? I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist, does it? I mean, you don't have to have a math degree in this. And Simon replied, well, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt. He said, you have judged correctly, Jesus said. 
Then he turned toward the woman, and then he said to Simon, Simon, you see this woman? Do you see her? Look at her. I came into your house. You didn't give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears, and then she wiped them with her hair. That was the custom of that day, to usually for the guests, they had someone to wipe the feet of the person because their feet were, they wore sandals and they had dust on their feet. So it was a customary thing of the person that was invited to the house that they would have someone to wash their feet. He says, you didn't even do that. You did not give me a kiss. Now I'm not talking about a kiss like a kiss of husband and wife, but a kiss of greeting. Now you see some people kiss on the side of the cheek and everything. A kiss of greeting. He says, you didn't even, you didn't even greet me. In other words, but this woman from the time I entered had not stopped kissing my feet. You didn't put any oil on my head, but she poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, how many sins have been forgiven her, for she loved much, but he who has been forgiven little, loves little. Oh, this really, we see. Simon the Pharisee, what do we see about him? He was blind to all that went on and all took place what the woman was doing and what, what had taken place. He was blinded to all that help you know, as far as his responsibility as well. Simon could, could, only thing Simon could see was a sinful woman. Someone, an outcast. Someone he looked down upon and said, oh, what's this woman doing in my house? How dare this sinful woman come in here and do these, th these terrible things? And then, not only did he look down upon the woman, but he also looked down upon Jesus. Oh, if this man was a prophet, he would have known what kind of woman this was. Simon, by his actions, what did he, he show that he was not a person? That it was very one who believed in much, did he? By his actions, he showed he was not the person he should have been. See, Simon was a pretender. He was a hypocrite. He was a fake, a fraud, however you want to call it. St. Jesus, by his illustration, he showed that both Simon and the woman had something in common. What did they have in common? They both were sinners in need of Jesus Christ for forgiveness, for salvation. They were both on the same plane. I don't care how much money Simon had and how much money the woman didn't have. They both had in common. They were sinners in need of Jesus Christ for forgiveness and for salvation. That's what was needed in their lives. And he couldn't see this. What did Simon consider himself? He considered himself better, not only better than the woman, but also better than Jesus. And this man had known who it was. And why did he think that? Because of his religion. He was a Pharisee. Huh? He belonged to the religious, the religious order of that day. He obeyed the law. He did the rituals. Oh, he was in church every Sunday. He was there on Wednesday nights. He did the many other things that was required of him by the religious leaders. So, by his standard. He was okay. He gave himself a seal of approval concerning who he was. And here we see there was no thought of this woman or her need or what she needed in her life and how he could even help her. Not at all. Here the woman puts her faith and trust in Jesus and she came to him for forgiveness and for repentance. Simon never showed Jesus any respect or hospitality. He invited him into his house, and that was it. Here you go, Jesus, sit down, have a seat. Right here. Didn't do anything in his feet. Didn't put anything on his head. Nothing. Nothing. You know, today, we have many people, and I've said it before, they have religion, but they don't have Jesus. Think about it. Simon had religion, but he didn't have Jesus. The woman wanted Jesus in her heart and her life. And there was a diff there's a difference between having religion and having Jesus. We have many religions in the world. Even in the Southern Baptist realm, you realize that 
people who are into religion, Jesus and their heart and their minds, that's different. How can you tell by their action, how they talk, how they live, what they say, what they do? Now, are we perfect? Absolutely not. Where God says all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. But again, understand, there's a difference of having a religion and having Jesus in a person's heart. When a person has Jesus Christ in their heart and life, there's going to be a change in their life. There's going to be a change in their thinking. They're not going to do the same thing. They're not going to be able to do it because of Christ in their hearts and their lives. Simon was a hypocrite. He was a pretender. He didn't have God in his heart. Had he had God in his heart, he would not have shown disrespect to Jesus or even thought that of Jesus. He would have shown even more partiality to the woman who came unto Jesus and for help. But yet he looked down upon both. Again, there's a difference. Sadly, there are many, like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, up to the, even today, that are blinded, by the, are blinded by the things of God because of Christ not living in their hearts and their lives. And they make excuses. Oh, I've heard many of them, trust me. I've heard many of them talking with different people. I've heard many excuses of why, and how come, and what for. None are valid. There are no valid excuses. And understand, I tell this to people, I judge no one. God is the one who judge. And it's God to whom you must stand before, as we saw in our lesson today, to whom you must give an account of all that you've done. So it's not religion that you need, it's Jesus Christ. Simon had religion. What did it do for him in his life? Nothing. The woman wanted Jesus in her heart and her life. That was the difference. Again, many were walking down life's road, and they're walking down that wide road of life. And only a few are walking down the narrow road. And that narrow road has to do with knowing Jesus Christ. Where the wide road, you can do whatever you like, whatever you please. Oh, I know God, I know about God, I know Jesus, I know about Jesus, but yet Jesus doesn't live in their hearts and their lives. So they're walking down that big old road. Finding fault in all kinds of things in the world. Like the Pharisee, we have so many people living the same way. Some of them even in churches. And yet, they don't have Jesus in their hearts and their lives. This woman came seeking. Where the Pharisee, he was blinded by the things of the world and even his own religion concerning what he saw. Third thing we see here is the saving grace of Jesus Christ. The saving grace that is administered upon this woman. Notice what took place again in verse 47 and following here. As again, he's talking to Simon the Demon at the end. He says, Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgotten. Not will be, have been forgotten. For she loved much, and, and, and he who had been forgiven little, loved little. One is talking about the woman, the other is talking about Simon. That's what Jesus is pointing us to. Then Jesus said to her, that is a sinful woman, your sins are forgiven. And boy, that, that really struck Simon when he, when he heard this. Listen to what he said. The other guests began to say among themselves, Who is this that he even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, even more so, he says, Your faith has saved you. Go. Oh, that's awesome. Here the woman, the sinful woman, came unto Jesus for forgiveness, for repentance, for hope, and she received from the Lord for Jesus. She was forgiven. And she was forgiven not because of her tears. She was forgiven not because of her perfume, not because of the action she had done, but because of her faith. What did Jesus tell them? Because of your faith, you're been saved. You see, no one is saved because of works. That contradicts the Bible. 
no matter how good you may think you are, or how good you may want to be, you cannot earn salvation. Salvation is a gift. Here, Jesus says, your faith will save you. A faith in who? A faith in Jesus Christ. You see, this woman didn't want religion, she wanted Jesus. And this is what she received in her heart and her life. And all of this was done because of her faith in Jesus Christ. The evidence of her faith she so demonstrated to others. Because of her faith in Jesus, here we see what she had done. The evidence was there. Likewise, Simon displayed his faith as well. Did you know that? He displayed his faith. And by his works, what do we see? There was no evidence of faith whatsoever. Zero. Zero faith. Zero evidence of it. There was nothing displayed about the fact that he was a Pharisee, someone who was considered a very religious person. And yet where was the evidence? Where was the kindness? Where was the grace? Where was the mercy? Nothing was shown the Father's faith. So many times we see people today like that. You know, often what you, many people ask, why is it that so many people are turned off by church or, or people who go to church? Because of the lack of evidence shown in the lives of believers to other people. And people said, why should I do this, this, and this when these other people are living like the devil and yet on Sunday they go to church and there's no evidence that there's a change. Is it not true? Again, not judging anyone because we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But it's the evidence shown here. And Jesus said, because of our faith, our faith in Jesus, faith in him. We, we see that Jesus reveals to Simon and to others that he what? He had the power to forgive sins and to save people who was full of sin. This woman who was considered an outcast by the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the leaders of the law. This woman who was declared an outcast and not allowed to even go to the synagogue. Here Jesus not only forgave her of her sins, but notice he tells her in the end, such an awesome thing, your faith has saved you. In other words, salvation has come to that woman because she put her faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That's the evidence of it. Her faith came to, to, to fruition. We see how it comes about. Here she cries with tears, not of sorrow, but tears of joy, of happiness. And now she knows that there is someone who cares. Someone to whom she can go to. Let God say that. He says, I've sent my son. Jesus says, come unto me all who are weary. And I will give you rest for your soul. For God so loved the world and gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. See, salvation is found in Jesus Christ. This woman left complete body, soul, and spirit. Because Jesus said, she knew Jesus Christ that day as our Lord and Savior. Simon, on the other hand, he was blinded by the sin in his life. He did not see Jesus as the means of forgiveness or of salvation that needed in his life. And there are so many like this today as well. And some of even our churches, throughout denominations, I don't care what denomination it is, it is sad that we see this, that they are blinded by the things of the world and, this, and even his own sins in their lives, and yet they will not give unto Jesus their sins. They will not ask Jesus or even humble themselves before the Lord and say, Lord, help me with the sin in my own life. Help me, Lord, to overcome. You know, daily, as believers, we need to ask the Lord to help us with our sin, and those sins that we struggle with on a daily basis, every single day. When you don't, let me tell you what happens. One, help yourself. And help yourself will help you fall. Two, Satan will come in and attack you. At that point, and at that time, he will come in there and attack you because he knows where your weaknesses are. Instead, his demons and his false angels hinder you walk with the Lord because you have not 
come up to us and say, Lord, help me for today. Be with me. Help me to overcome that which I am struggling with. It, it, it's not a disaster. It's not unmanly to come to the Lord and say, Lord, help me with the sin that I am struggling with. Help me to overcome. We need to come to him just like the man who came to Jesus and say, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. There are many things that we're skeptical, skeptical about in life. But the only one that can help us is the Lord. And many times we're like this Pharisee. We're all there. We're like this Pharisee and we say, I'm not a good person. I'm more better off than he is or she is. Instead, we should help each other. We should help other people. Now look down upon those. And then we ourselves need to ask the Lord, Lord, help me with what's going on in my life and what's taking place with me. The sinful woman left that day a saved soul, a completed soul, a soul who saw a light at the end of the tongue. But the Pharisee did not. And why? Because the Pharisee did not give unto Jesus. He did not humble himself. He did not look to the Lord as someone who could help him, as someone who could give him that hope that he was looking for. That thing that was missing in his life, he did not find it. And so Jesus says, come, come and humble yourselves. Come, all who are weary, and I will give you rest in your soul. Do you truly have rest in your soul? Do you truly know Jesus Christ as your Lord, as your Savior? Let us stand. Almighty God, as we come to you, we thank you, Lord, for your word, for what you have spoken. If there's anyone here this morning that does not know you, that Lord and Savior, I pray that by your grace and for your glory, they will come unto you today. And they will humble, them, humble themselves before you as did the woman. And I pray, Lord, they will not be like the Pharisee and look at the fault of others and try to proclaim themselves good. But I pray they will come unto you and I pray you will convict each and every. We ask it in your name, Jesus. Amen. Turn to hymn number 318 as we sing in our closing song and also invitation. And now I understand, I've said before, that walking down the aisle doesn't save anyone. But what it does do, that if you, what you are doing, you are publicly acknowledging Jesus Christ. And this is not to embarrass you, but this is to make it public. Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father in heaven. And this is also to pray for you. So whatever God is dealing with you today, we, we have this as a means of which you can publicly say, I want Jesus Christ in my heart and my life. I want to know Him as Lord and Savior. So if God is talking to you, if God is telling you, come, then you come and answer the call of God, not of men. Know that you too can be forgiven of all of your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ and what He has done. But God is speaking to you there to come. As we sing all four standards in hymn number 318.
grace and mercy. And know that we struggle. We all struggle with sin, just like the sinful woman. We all need Jesus Christ to help us to overcome the sins that we struggle with on a daily basis. Pray for each other. Remember each other. Especially pray for those who are lost and not for Jesus Christ as they want to see. I pray for God's blessing upon each and every one. We invite you to come back Wednesday night if we have our prayer time. This coming Wednesday at 7 o'clock back in the kitchen area. If all would like to come, prayer time about the study to study to come and come. And as always, come next week. Come and for those who are not in Sunday school, come and have Bible study with us at 9.15. Come and see what God's word has to say as they discuss around the table things of God and what's in the Bible and they have a lesson of course, but it helps. So if you're not, let me encourage you to come and to be in Sunday School at 915 as we discuss and we look into the Word of God and whatever class you would like to be in, come and join us. <coughs> uh, the people from Femur before church came here and if anyone is in need of assistance from Femur, there is I have these um, pamphlets, these Flyers here that they have left. So if you or someone else you know needs help as far as with femur, uh, maybe SBA loan or whatever the case may be, they, they, they left this here and you can take one. I'll leave it back in the foyer area. Uh, take one and if you know somebody or you yourself need help, you can call them and, and see if you qualify or if they can help you, whatever you may be going through as far as with uh, the remnants or you have to take them. Of Hurricane Isaac. So I'll leave this back in the story. Anything else we need to be aware of? If not, I pray God's blessing upon you today and that you will look to the Lord, not only today, but the remainder of the week as well. And, and look to God and, and as we well. Now, Sunday school lesson also today. Live as, as people belonging to God and live to where you too can show others that God lives. Your heart, your heart as well. Pray for each other and remember each other in prayer during the course of the week and the remainder of our lives as well. May God bless each and every one. Now lead us in open prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you that we are able to be here. Thank you for your word. The word you were going for help. Thank you, Father, for the brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for the strength that we get from each one and from you. I pray, Lord, that you'll watch over us as we go our separate ways. Bring us back to worship and pray together for you. I pray that if God has spoken to you today, whether here or you looking at this on Facebook or YouTube, and if you need further counseling or if you would like to talk to someone and you live locally here, you can call at, at the church at 985-214-9343. And feel free to call for if you're out of town or if you don't live near here, seek your local pastor or minister and talk to them further about your own eternal life. We only have today. So if you would like to seek or to talk to someone, feel free to call us and let us know if we can help you in your eternal life, your salvation, your relationship with the Lord as well.